What's going on guys? Hope you guys are having a good night. Um, I have a little congestion going on, so I apologize, but I assure you I will survive. I want to do a knife review. Seemingly the most consistent thing I do in my life is another knife review. This is the Spyderco Manix 2. This is the Sprint Run with the Blurple handle. Um, they call it dark blue. A lot of people call it purple, so it's the Blurple. And as you can see, Golden Colorado USA Earth. And then you'll also see a little E there. So this was created by Eric Glesser, which is the owner's son. The owner is Sal. This is Eric. All right. It has a upgraded steel on this sprint run, CPM S110V. Um, pretty sharp stuff and also a little tougher to sharpen as well. But um, I will post some videos of me cutting up some cardboard and stuff. Nothing special. Um, I actually kept getting the cardboard caught here because I, the knife was just going straight through it and getting caught there. But um, I may attach that to the end of this video. I don't know. But uh, I did cut some stuff with it. Carried it for a little while, maybe a week. And I like it a lot. I flipped the handle on Eric. I have this on loan from my buddy Eric and uh, appreciate it. So let's go over some of the specs real quick. And before I do that, the original Manix was released in 2004. This is the Manix 2, which was released early 2010. Um, this is the Sprint Run, which I believe is a lot newer than that. Okay. The overall length on this knife is 8 inches. The blade is 3.375. The cutting edge is 2.88. The thickness on the blade is 0 0.13. It's a pretty good hunk of metal there. Of course, it comes down to a fine tip because that's Spyderco. I always worry about the integrity of that tip. But um, I'm not going to be prying with this or anything. It's First, it's not mine. But I have spider codes and I'm not going to pry because uh, that's dumb. You're going to break it. And I like the full steel liners. There's jimping everywhere on this thing. So there's jimping here. Jimping here. Forward choil here. Jimping all along here. And a little thumb ramp right here. Okay, uh, I gotta say the thing does feel good in your hand. It's a big handle, and I think it feels good. You can move your finger up, work your whole hand up, and you can use that choil to do some finer things. And with that, like I said, the steel is a CPM S110V. It's a drop point with a full flat grind, which is the Spyderco way, and it makes it. Uh, a great slicer, right? So, um, as you guys know, I have like a little wire cage here. I can't really move. I'm kind of restricted, but it just makes for a good picture. So, I'll see if I can cut some of this on camera. So, this thing's pretty darn sharp, right? Um, so, I thought I would cut some cardboard and stuff like that instead of paper. Just to show you, the thing is pretty darn sharp. If I had more room, I could really slice some stuff, but I don't, so I won't. Because um, I'm going to end up cutting my hand or wrist on camera. And uh, my five-month-old son, or almost six months old, well, not like that. Uh, he's sleeping right now. So, the weight on this knife is 4.13 ounces. Not that bad for, you know... I don't want to say a tank of a knife, but not that bad for uh, this sturdy of a knife. It's got a lot of metal on it, right? The handle is 4.625. Like I said, it's a purplish blue or a blurple G10. Steel liners and jumping everywhere. It has a caged ball bearing lock, is what they call it. Um, and then you can also flip the pocket clip. I flipped it on Eric. He's right-handed. Um, but when I use a knife, I never realized this. 
until people started lending me knives and I realized the pocket clip was on the other side and I'm like, eh, no big deal, I'm not gonna switch it around. But then when I go to open the knife like this or do like a spidey flick, which I normally don't do, I really depend on that pocket clip being there. So I like it there. I can kind of hold on to the knife that way. All right. So overall, um, I wanted to show you this ball bearing. Okay, so some people say they, they've never seen it before. So there's obviously a spring pressing on this lock here. And you can see the ball bearing right there. And as I open the knife, it's going to fall into its place and it's going to disappear. Okay, watch. Gone. All right. Because it's being pushed forward. So as I open the knife, you can see it being pushed forward. And there's an opening and a cut in the blade right there. And it presses right into that spot. Um, and it's a sturdy, it's a sturdy lock. It feels good. There's no movement or anything like that. The spring behind this little tab, which is ambidextrous by the way, is very, very strong. So uh, that's good because it's not gonna go anywhere, but you really have to pull back on this thing with both hands with quite a bit of force. Um, but like I said, it's not a huge deal. I think it's gonna help with the knife lockup. Now, when I first got the knife, I realized there's jumping everywhere, right? Like I said, there's jumping from here to here. There's jumping from here to here. There's some right here, which is great. But I don't know. When I was going to pull on this to unlock the knife, it was sliding right here. <laughs> the only place there's not jumping, right? You know, it's very smooth right there. And when I was pulling the lock, you can see it in my hand it was kind of like doing that so I had to make sure to really stick it right in the center of my palm or you know that meaty part of your hand so it's not gonna slide because it kept sliding down and I couldn't close the knife so now that I'm getting used to it I'm holding the pocket clip doing all kinds of other stuff and it feels good okay so the knife feels extremely solid um, I'm pretty impressed with it. I would like to compare it to some other knives that you may or may not have. Some knives that you've seen. We have the China made Spyderco Tenacious, which I've done a review on before if you want to check that out. And then I just picked up, just picked up, the left-handed Spyderco PM2. Lefties represent. Uh, that's pretty awesome. I will be doing a review on that after I get to carry it for a while. I've been carrying this knife for, I think, around a week now, and I've cut some cardboard up and stuff like that, like I said, and it's done everything I've wanted it to. Um, I'm not going to do anything stupid with it because it's not my knife. Uh, he said use it any way you want, but I'm not going to because it's sprint run. It's just kind of a special knife, but I have used it to open boxes and cut up some stuff, okay? Um, so this is what it looks like compared to some common... Spyderco knives. You know, we can also compare it to a couple other knives. This is the Benchmade Freak or Super Freak because it's the upgraded version. I have a review on this if you want to check that out. And one more. Let's do maybe two more. Who knows? Maybe three more. Here is the Benchmade Presidio 2. This thing weighs 29 pounds, but it will survive World War III. No doubt about it. This thing is a beast. I have a review on that as well. Okay. So, obviously, this has the ambidextrous axis lock. Uh, the spring is not nearly as strong as this, but I've never had an issue with it, and I mainly stick to Benchmade because of my left-handedness. Okay. So, uh, this is probably the smoothest ambidextrous axis lock that I have. This knife is just awesome. You know, easy one hand operation. Um, this one I kinda, I just, I'm getting used to it now because I've been carrying it, but it does take a little time to get used to. Uh, one thing I do wanna nitpick on, I guess, beautiful knife, 
upgraded steel, beautiful scales. I call them purple, call them what you want. Um, it's great. Jumping everywhere. Solid knife, solid knife. And this knife goes for about $170, this version right here, about $170, okay? That is what bothers me, right here, that right there. So this is a molded piece of plastic. Um, it's not necessarily grippy, I gotta say. I think they really could have just done that little tiny step and they could have made it better. They could have made it micarta or they could have just matched the G10, you know, black G10 right there. Um, they could have used aluminum or something like that, but not plastic. So kind of disappointed in that. But besides that, you know, I think it's a great knife. If you're into Spyderco, it's kind of a unique knife. And I don't think they'll be available forever, but uh, I think there are some out there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This is the Spyderco Manix 2 Blurple Color, the S110 V Edition. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. And I hope you enjoyed it. And more than anything, I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thanks for watching.